All right, welcome students to Keynesian Economics 101. So um, in the early stages of the Great Depression, people became obsessed with a man by the name of John Maynard Keynes. And he became a very famous economist because he kind of changed the way we thought about how economy runs. And so before this time period, when capitalism was at its height in America, most people believed the economy functioned this way. So I'm going to show you this on the board. So people believe that what was called ebbs and flow, which essentially means that the economy, like a river or like an, an ocean, as the ocean uh, as the ocean rises and falls with waves, or as a river flows down the river, right? There's nothing that we do to change that. It does that all on its own. It, it runs itself naturally, and they would say that about the economy too. So the economy will naturally rise and it will fall and it will rise and it will fall and it will rise and it will fall and it will rise. And this is the natural process of things. But over time, the economy will generally rise. That was the belief. So when things are good, we call this a boom. And when things are bad, we call this a bust. And a capitalist would say when things are good, it's because you're because cap capitalism believes in individualism, that when things are good, you should save and you should uh, protect yourself against a bust. And if you do that, if you save your money now, when, when a bust happens, you'll be okay. You won't be destitute. Or even when a bust happens, that's the best time to invest um, in building your business or investing in, in stocks or whatever like, like, like that. But the idea is that it's not anybody's fault but your own if in a bust cycle you have no money, right? If you saved in a boom, you'll be prepared for the bust. And this is kind of the model that most people believed in, right? Until something happened that nobody could have predicted. And that, as you guys learned from Mr. Kim, was the Great Depression, right? We saw the rises and the fall of the economy, but then 1930 hit and it busted more than we'd ever seen before, right? And it stayed, and it stayed down for a really, really long time. So people became obsessed with a man by the name of John Maynard Keynes who changed the way we kind of viewed the economy. So I'm going to explain that to you really quickly and hopefully this will, under, this will make sense. So pay close attention because I think that you guys are pretty smart and you can figure this out. It's really not that complicated. So the first thing you need to understand about Keynesian economics is he believed in two things. Number one, I'm going to put this up here on the board. He believed, number one, he believed in what was called the animal spirit. So he thought that people, us, were kind of like animals. We, well, we are animals. He said that we aren't really smart enough. We get really like connected to our money. We get really like, money's kind of our driving force. And we get really worried about using our money ineffectively. So we, we act really irrationally. And so he said, sometimes when things aren't going well in the economy, even though we, we might even know it's not the best idea, we're going we're gonna to pull our money out of the economy because we're irrational about it. And so he believes, Keynes believed that people aren't smart enough, right? Or rational enough to do with our money what is best with our money, right? He believed that we need government to take some control over the economy to make us act more rationally. So when the economy is driven by people, it's kind of like, you know, uh, like the way that a deer responds when, you know, when, uh, I don't know, I don't know if this makes sense, but uh, the way a deer responds when you're, you're going to hit it with a car, it just kind of like stares at you or it acts irrationally. It doesn't really think about its future. So he believes that the economy should not be driven by people, but the economy should be driven by the economy. So that's the second thing, is that he believes that the government should steer the economy. Okay, and so I'm going to explain how this works. So number one, he believes that people are irrational with their money and shouldn't be in charge of their money. Government should take more control over the economy itself and drive the economy to where it needs to go. So I'm going to do this in a graph to help you guys understand that. So John Maynard Keynes says that this idea of the ebbs and flow 
You know, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So he says the economy will rise and fall. You're right. Just like we've talked about. But he says that the risk of leaving the economy this way is that people will act irrationally and we can't protect ourselves against things like the Great Depression. And so he said what we need to do in response is the government needs to step in and act in response to these uh, to this economic cycle. So I'm going to use this red pen and this is going to represent red is going to represent government spending. So government spending would include government taking large amounts of money even money that it borrows and investing it to the economy. So building roads and dams and schools and all sorts and parks and all sorts of other things. This is government spending. So when things look like this in the economy, what John Maynard Keynes would say is that when things are not going well in the economy, so as the economy is collapsing, the government should increase should increase its spending. So when things aren't good, government should increase its spending. What that would do is that would provide people that are jobless with jobs, that would put money in their pockets. If people have money in their pockets, they're gonna spend that money, and that's going to re-stimulate the economy. If I have money in my pocket, I'm gonna walk down the street to Natural Greens, I'm gonna buy myself a Red Bull, right? If I don't have money, I'm not gonna do that. And so when the government spends money and gives people jobs or labor, that will help to rebuild or re-stimulate the economy. So that's the first thing. And then with this pen, with this kind of blue pen, I'm gonna draw um, what is related to what we call uh, government taxation. Okay, so when Things are good and things are bad. So I'll, I'll just put this up here so you guys know this is called a boom again. And a bust. So in a time of a boom and a time of a bust, what should happen to taxation? Well, taxation, when things are going really bad, taxes should follow a similar line to the ebbs and flow. So when things are bad, Taxation should be lowered. So we lower taxes when times are not good because what that does is if people are paying less taxes, then they're more likely to be able to save money or put money in their pockets to spend on the economy. Now the idea is what should happen when things are good? Well, when things are good, the first thing we need to do is reduce government spending. So we're going to stop spending, the government's going to stop spending money and they're going to allow the private businesses to begin to spend money. So if the government was building dams or schools or roads when things were bad, when things are good, they're going to allow private businesses to do that more. Then also when times are good, what the government is going to do is they are going to increase taxes. And what this will do is it will help by increasing taxes when times are good, it will help to repay off the money that the government spent when times were bad. So the idea here is that the government is okay when times are bad or in a bust. They're okay with going into debt because they know that that, that debt's going to be able to be paid off by increases, increasing taxes when things are good. So the idea is by increasing taxes when things are good and by reducing government spending when things are good, we're going to save up money for the next time that we see a, a bust. And then in that bust, then the government can spend more money, right, that it's saved, and it's going to reduce taxes for people in order to put more money into the pockets of people. So what will inevitably happen if the government follows this line, which has a lot to do with the government controlling the economy, instead of the ebbs and flow of the economy going up and down really big, what will eventually happen, and I'll use this, uh, this purple, is that this is the desired outcome.
is instead of having an economy that goes up and down and up and down, it will look more like a gradual, gradual economy that rises and falls, but generally it goes in an upwards direction. So that's the basic idea of Keynesian economics. We call these two things government spending and taxation collectively. We refer to this as fiscal policy. So this means government having more control or taking more control on how much they spend as a government and what kinds of things they do as far as tax law is concerned. So generally these ideas of Keynesian economics became very popular in the Great Depression as people asked or sought after government um, to help them to get through the catastrophe of the depression. If the government could give them jobs or provide financial aid to people that needed that welfare, the hope was that um, it could re-stimulate the economy and rebuild the economy. Um, these ideas of Keynesian economics were loved by um, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who took these ideas and applied them in real life to create what was called uh, Roosevelt's New Deal, which you guys are going to learn about here in a little bit. Okay, one other thing about John Maynard Keynes and the transition from classical to modern liberalism it has to do with one other major influence that caused people's kind of minds to change about the government coming involved in the economy. So if you remember, going back, that one of the main things that made people move against progressivism and back towards capitalism in the 1920s was a fear of communism, if you remember us talking about that. So people in America, when they thought of communism, they thought of it as like really evil. So we're gonna put like, I don't know, like put the mouth here. Oh, actually that's, it would, communism wouldn't smile. It would be like flat and it'd have like big fangs like this. So people were afraid of communism in what was called the first red scare. And if you remember, the first red scare was in the early 1900s. After 1917, the rise of communism in Russia was terrifying for Americans because they're like, what if communism comes and starts a revolution here and causes a civil war and lots of people die? And so communism was like a really dirty word. Plus, if you remember that communist blew up that bank on Wall Street. And that was like really bad and scary. However, what was interesting is by, by the 1930s, people in America kind of changed their views of communism. Because when you looked at Russia and how Russia was, was getting on, especially during the Great Depression, when we looked at all of the countries of the world and how they were affected by the Great Depression, most of them were failing, except for Russia. Right? Stalin, if you guys know who that is, Joseph, Joseph Stalin. Wow, why can't I spell? Joseph Stalin started something that was called, um, it was called his first and second five-year plans. And what this was is in his first five-year plan, he used agriculture Right? He sold major, major agricultural resources. He collectivized the farms to make a ton of money to invest into industry. So the first five years, they sold tons of agricultural supplies and stuff and then started to build big factories. And then in the second five years, those factories were built, used to build up the, the Russian military. And between these two five-year plans, it seemed like the whole economy of the world in the 1930s was suffering and people were, were, were suffering except for some reason, Russia was doing really well economically. They were the only ones that were able to kind of hedge up against uh, the Great Depression. And so Americans started to look at Russia and say, maybe communism isn't that evil. Maybe we do need some level of government influence in our economy. And so between Keynesian economics and this idea of that the government should drive the economy and a change in people's feelings about communism, we started to see Americans blaming capitalism for the causes of the Great Depression and looking towards electing governments that would, that would take a more active role in driving the economy forward. Okay, so if you're answering your question, remember, Americans began to blame capitalism because of the influence of John Maynard Keynes and 
uh, looking at the results of, of, of communism in the Great Depression.